Give us the damn patriots! Ukrainian Foreign Minister The conflict between Moscow and Kiev could reach a stage where EU countries have to deploy combat troops to Ukraine in order to counter Russian advances, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba has warned. In an interview with Politico, Kuleba complained about the decline in Western military aid for Kiev in recent months. Give us the damn patriots! He said, referring to the US-made air defense missile systems, which, he insisted, Kiev needs to target Russian jets that launch aerial guided bombs. Moscow's increased reliance on these upgraded munitions is why Ukrainian troops are losing positions, the foreign minister claimed. Kuleba once again expressed regret over the resistance of Republican lawmakers to attempts by the administration of US President Joe Biden to push through another $60 billion in assistance for Ukraine. He also dismissed a question about Germany's reluctance to supply long-range Taurus missiles, saying he is tired of answering this. Sorry. However, French President Emmanuel Macron, who said last month that he cannot exclude the possibility of soldiers from NATO countries being sent to Ukraine, avoided Kuleba's criticism. Kiev never asked for European combat troops' boots on the ground, but EU leaders need to get used to the idea that the day may come, Kuleba stressed. I'm perfectly aware that Europeans are not used to the idea of war, but this is a carelessness Europeans simply cannot afford neither for themselves nor their children. Because if Ukraine loses, Russian President Vladimir Putin will not stop, he said. Putin said earlier that claims by Kiev and its foreign backers that Russia will target NATO states are nonsense. However, in another interview, the president stressed that Moscow will treat Western troops as interventionists if they are deployed to Ukraine and would respond accordingly. The deputy chairman of the Russian state Duma, Pyotr Tolstoy, warned Macron last week against directly engaging Russia on the battlefield. We will kill all French soldiers who set foot on Ukrainian soil, every single one that comes, Tolstoy said. The Ukrainian armed forces hit the large landing ship Konstantin Olshi Ukrainian armed forces hit the large landing ship Konstantin Olshinsky with a Neptune missile. Ukrainian Navy spokesperson Dmitro Plitinchuk said this. Currently, this ship is not combat capable, Plitinchuk said on national television. He added that a Ukrainian-made Neptune anti-ship missile was used for this Ukraine, which still controls several hundred kilometers of Black Sea coastline despite Russian occupation of some of its southern regions, does not have any large warships however, it has conducted a series of successful strikes on Russia's Black Sea fleet in recent months using missiles or seaborne drones, there was no immediate comment from Russia. Russia took the Konstantin Olshinsky from Ukraine, along with most of Kiev's navy, when its troops occupied the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. Plitinchuk said, currently, this ship is not combat capable. There was no immediate comment from Russia. Russia took the Konstantin Olshinsky from Ukraine, along with most of Kiev's navy, when its troops occupied the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. Nine years it was dismantled for parts, and a year ago they decided to restore IT. In addition, the Speaker of the Naval Forces of the Ukrainian Armed Forces confirmed the defeat of the ship Ivan Kurs in Crimea. As for the Ivan Kurs, we can confirm the defeat of reconnaissance equipment in the assault part of the ship. That is, in fact, now he is not ready for combat. He cannot carry out the tasks as intended, said Dmitry Pletenchuk. Russian missile passed over Poland, Poles refused to shoot it down so as not to endanger people. Lieutenant General Jacek Gorizowski, spokesperson for the Operational Command of the Armed Forces of Poland, has explained that a Russian missile that entered Polish airspace on the night of the 23rd to the 24th of March was not downed because the Polish military realized that it would leave Poland's airspace and an attempt to down it would have put civilians at risk. Gorizowski explained that the decision not to shoot down the missile was taken by the commander of the Armed Forces Operational Command. The decision was based on the information from our radar systems. The assessment of the missile's trajectory, speed and altitude showed that it would leave our airspace, he added. 
He added that an attempt to down the missile would have posed a greater risk for locals. A missile weighs over two tons, 400 kilograms of which is the payload. After the missile had been downed, missile debris would have fallen on our territory. The remains of the effector used to down it would also have landed there, he explained. Gorizowski noted that if the missile had flown deeper into Poland, a decision to down it using pairs of F-16 fighter jets may have been taken. It is the operational commander who assesses the situation and is authorized to make that decision. On the other hand, even after receiving permission to down a missile, a fighter jet pilot may decide not to do it if there is a risk that debris could fall on a hospital or a school. The location of the missile's landing site is also important in making the decision, he explained. Gorizowski added that Russia deliberately maneuvers its missiles in such a way that they circle round and strike targets in Ukraine from the west. The Ukrainian air defense has realized that most Russian missiles come from the east or north. The defenders are less likely to expect an attack from the west, he said. On the 24th of March, Polish airspace was violated by a maneuvering missile launched from a long-range Russian warplane. The missile entered Polish airspace near the village of Osadow in the Lublin Voivodship and remained there for 39 seconds.